at the start of the season, before a ball had been kicked, I made a video about one player from every championship club who has a point to prove this season. Today we're going to be revisiting that video and see if these players have proved the points or not. Guys, we're back to another video on the channel. Loads of fun was had putting this video together. So if you do go on to enjoy, make sure to leave a like and do get your thoughts in the comments down below of the player that we're going to bring up in today's video. 250 likes would be massively appreciated. Do stick around and subscribe for some regular championship content as well. But without any further ado, let's jump into this one. Barnsley Devante Cole. Now this transfer raised a few eyebrows when it went through. Cole's record in the EFL up until this point isn't exactly stellar. He's coming off the back of a decent season with Motherwell but has it all to prove that he is good enough to cut it at this level. To be honest I don't think that anyone around Barnsley has done their reputation any good this year. Devante Cole scored just one goal from eight starts and 13 appearances from the bench. Birmingham Sam Cosgrove. He made a two million pound move over in January and is still yet to hit the back of the net for Birmingham. Well fast forward the clocks and he's still not scored for Birmingham City. Crazy the sort of money that Birmingham outlaid on him not too long ago. He now finds himself out on loan at AFC Wimbledon in League One. Blackburn Rovers Ben Brereton. He's coming off the back of his best goal scoring season with Blackburn today with seven goals and I think that he's going to want to take his game up another level. He's just coming off the back of a fantastic Copper America campaign with Chile and with Adam Armstrong potentially departing Blackburn this summer, the main sort of goal scoring onus could fall upon his his shoulders next season. All right, at least I got this one right. Ben Brereton Diaz has been absolutely fantastic for Blackburn this season, and since he's been sort of out of that squad, we've seen Blackburn's attacking numbers absolutely fall off a cliff. So yeah, he's going to be absolutely pivotal for their running, and he has been fantastic this year. Like Paul, I'm going to go with Chris Maxwell. I think that he's going to be desperate to prove that he's still good enough to be playing at this level. Maxwell's a bit of an interesting one to be honest with you because he started out the season reasonably well for Blackpool, but he then got that injury and since Grimshaw's been in the side there doesn't really look to be a way back for Maxwell because Grimshaw's been that good. Bournemouth Chris Mentham now last season he'll be looking to put behind him um, after that playoff semi-final second leg where he was sent off against Brentford ultimately that showed to be a bit of a turning point in that match obviously Bournemouth went on to lose and were knocked out subsequently to Brentford who were then promoted yeah I really thought this could be a bit of a redemption season for Chris Mentham after messing up in the playoff semi-final last year but he's not really been first choice there and um, the preferred two has mostly been Cahill and Kelly and obviously in January they went ahead and brought in Nat Phillips. Bristol City Casey Palmer now Bristol City really struggled for creativity last season in fact they had the few starts of shots in the league with only 496 attempts on goal which was by far and away the lowest in the championship. To be fair to Bristol City and to Nigel Pearson they have managed to turn those attacking numbers around now at the point where Bristol City are probably one of the most entertaining sides to watch in the league going forward albeit at the back and um, things have sort of flipped in its head. Not really thanks to Casey Palmer though he's only started one championship match for Bristol City this season with five appearances off the bench. Cardiff I'm going to go with Josh Murphy. Murphy. Murphy was a little bit in and out of that Cardiff squad last season, but he's 26 years old now. This should be the point where he's really coming into his prime and he should be showing, you know, week in, week out what he's capable of doing. Yeah, Josh Murphy's career at the moment just seems to be slipping away from him. Obviously, he currently finds himself on loan at Preston North End. I was really quite excited when we got this deal over the line, but we've not really seen much of him all season um, as Preston fans. He's only made seven appearances in the championship, all those coming off the bench for Preston. He's been injured. Um, um, for the past few months now hopeful that we'll see him at least for the running of the rest of the season but his contract with Cardiff is up at the end of the season and he looks like another player that's um, more likely to move on than not. Coventry I'm going to go with Martin Waghorn despite his brace on the final day for Derby last season was pretty poor by his standards he only scored five goals. Yeah Waghorn at the start of the season I thought was doing a fairly decent job of sort of facilitating Gierkerez and the goals that he had been scoring scoring but the more I've watched him lately the more it seems like a move that hasn't really worked out to be honest he's had nine starts nine appearances off the bench and just two goal contributions this year. Dolby Kemal Joswiak now Dolby don't exactly have the most amount of players for me to pick from here but Joswiak was a player who made the move over to Dolby last season 
and we're still really waiting to see the full package of what he can actually bring to this Derby side. Yeah, Joswiak, another one. Um, injuries certainly haven't helped him um, throughout his time at Derby in terms of establishing consistency, but this season, once again, another season where I've just not really seen it from Joswiak, and considering the sort of money that Derby outlaid for him compared to sort of, you know, he's one of the more experienced players, I suppose, in that squad that's built up of so many youngsters. It's just not really happened for him once again. Fulham, Marek Rodak. Now, I have been a huge fan of Rodak throughout the years. Yeah, I've always quite liked Rodak, to be honest with you, and I felt like last season in the Premier League, he got a little bit hard done by by not really giving him much of an opportunity, but he's impressed when I've seen him this season. He's got the seventh best save percentage of any championship goalkeeper this year. Huddersfield, Jordan Rhodes. Now, last season, Jordan Rhodes had a full season at Huddersfield. He scored 40 goals. If he even manages to score a quarter of that this season for Huddersfield, then this transfer has been a success for me. Oh, I could have gone with so many players for Huddersfield, but I had to pick Jordan Rhodes. I think that he got injured pretty much straight after I'd made that video, but he's getting himself back now and to be fair has chipped in with a few moments since he has been back in the side just one goal and two assists this season albeit from quite limited game time Hull City Malik Wilkes now after Hull's relegation from the championship the majority of the players that are still at the club now I think have a point to prove. Yeah, I think to be fair, quite a lot of Hull players have proved the point this season that they are good enough to cut it at this level. It looks like they are going to avoid the drop this season. Malik Wilkes, though, had a bit of a frustrating time. He's been out uh, the past couple of months with an injury. Finally got himself back at the weekend and he'll be hoping that he'll have um, a strong end to this season, having only scored three goals so far. Luton Town, I'm going to go with Harry Cornick. After the departure of their top scorer, James Collins, more of the goal-scoring onus may fall upon Cornick's shoulders going into next season. Do you know what? For Lewin Town, I'll take that because I do think that Cornick has proved the point this season. The goals have been a bit more shared around this season for Luton. Last season, he only scored one league goal for them and this season, he's already scored eight for them. Middlesbrough, for the time being, I'm going to say Tuber Akpom. I'm not sure what the future is going to hold for Akpom. He made the move over last summer for a fee of around about 2.75 million. Yeah, unfortunately, Akpom has joined the graveyard of strikers that just didn't work out at Middlesbrough, I'm afraid. Millwall, Benick, Afobe. My God, has he got a point to prove next season? It's crazy to think that just a few years ago, Stoke spent twelve million pounds on a phobe. Well, a phobe doesn't really look anywhere close to that twelve million striker that we once thought he could be. He has still chipped in with some moments this season for Millwall. He's got eight goal contributions despite having, you know, a few injuries throughout the season and things like that. Millwall fans, would you like to see him on a permanent basis next season? Nottingham Forest, Brennan Johnson. I think that everything looks set up for Brennan Johnson to absolutely storm the champion championship next season. Yes, finally, a good shout from me. Brennan Johnson has been absolutely fantastic this season. 10 goals, 6 assists, one of the best youngsters in the league, and I think that Steve Cooper has managed him perfectly. Peterborough, it's got to be Jack Marriott. His last season in a Peterborough shirt, he scored 33 goals and was probably one of the most sought-after strikers in the whole of the EFL three sort of injury hit seasons at Derby later and it's fair to say that his stock has fallen off quite considerably. Yeah unfortunately for Marriott it has been yet another injury hit season. He's only made nine starts in the championship this year. He has had some moments for Peterborough. He scored three goals for them so far but yeah just can't stay fit unfortunately. Preston North End Izzy Brown. Izzy Brown has been sent out on seven different loan spells throughout his time at Chelsea but now he really has the chance to settle down somewhere after signing a permanent contract with Preston North End. Oh, Izzy Brown. I feel a bit bad for him, to be honest with you, um, because he's had so many injuries throughout his career, and he picked up a season-ending injury in pre-season for Preston. He's been ruled out for the whole season, so we've not really had any opportunity to see him in the North End share. I don't know what the future holds for Izzy Brown, but he seems like a really nice guy. He just can't seem to stay fit. Keep your Chris Willock. Now, towards the end of last season, I think that Willock really established himself as one of Keep your star men. Yes, okay, this was a good shout. I go as far to say now that Chris Willock is the star man for QPR. Without him in the final third, I don't think that they quite function quite rightly. And if QPR are going to go up this season, he's going to be at the centre of it. Running John Swift with Michael Elise's impending departure this summer, John Swift will be more important than ever for Reading next season, provided that he can stay fit. Okay, we're on the roll with these shouts now because John Swift has been absolutely fantastic. We said there his point to prove this season was that he can stay fit. And so far, he's done that. You know, 32 
two starts this season in the championship. He's been arguably the best midfielder in the league. He's got 11 goals, 13 assists. Always has an absolute worldie of a game, annoyingly so against my team, Preston North End. But yeah, it'll be interesting to see what the future holds for John Swift because right now, He's playing at such a level in the championship. Sheffield United, Rian Brewster. The Blade spent a whopping £23.5 million on Rian Brewster last summer, and he's still yet to score for the club. I seem to have a knack from this video of just picking injury prone players. Brewster currently out with an injury for Sheffield United and had a bit of an indifferent season, obviously, starting out under Okanovic when no one was really hitting the heights at Sheffield United. Um, they sort of tried playing him as like a right forward sort of right winger hybrid which didn't really work out then Heckingbottom came in it and it seemed like Brewster started to find his feet a little bit more and got a couple goals under him and then since obviously picked up that unfortunate injury. Stoke City Ben Wilmot after the sale of Nathan Collins to Burnley Ben Wilmot has come in from Watford to be that obvious replacement obviously he's got quite big uh, shoes to fill after how good Nathan Collins was but yeah Wilmot certainly had his moments this season for Stoke I was in the stadium when he hit that absolute Thunderbolt of a goal against Preston, arguably the goal of the season, you know, for a centre half to hit the ball that cleanly and the way he did him to the back of the net from the distance he did was absolutely outrageous. Swansea City, Liam Walsh, this is a deal which has just gone through and I think that he has quite the point to prove going into next season with Swansea. Now with Swansea's sort of track record with developing young players like Walsh is, you know, he's only 23. This could be a bit of a bargain um, as they picked him up on a free after his contract had expired with Bristol City. Yeah, it's been a bit of a frustrating one with Liam Walsh to be honest with you. I thought that with, you know, Russ Martin coming in, the football Swansea were going to play, he seemed to be a perfect fit into that but it's not really worked out and obviously now finds himself out on loan at Hull. West Brom, Carlin Grant. Now, at the time, the £15 million that West Brom spent on Carlin Grant seemed like decent business. You know, I thought it was a good deal at the time. He was just coming off the back of a prolific season with Huddersfield in the Championship as probably one of the best forwards in the league that season. But so far, things just haven't clicked for him at West Brom, have they? He's only scored the one goal for the Baggies. Ah, uh, yeah, Carlin Grant's been a little bit on and off throughout the season for West Brom. I think we can say the same for a lot of their players so far obviously last season in the Premier League West Brom got nowhere near the return in terms of a goal return for the money they outlaid on Carlin Grant so far this season he scored 10 goals which isn't awful but when West Brom fans will be looking at the likes of you know Dom Solanke and Mitrovic and Ben Broughton and the numbers that they've been putting up Grant doesn't really stack up against them he had one or two months where he seemed to finally find his feet he was consistently hitting the back of the net I think around about October time but since then the goals have dried up and everything has just gone a little bit miserable around West Brom. But guys, there we have it. There was one player from every championship club who I thought had a point to prove at the start of the season. What do you make of them all? How do you think they've got on? I certainly think that we've had more misses than hits in this video. But if you did go in to enjoy, make sure to leave a like. Do stick around and subscribe for some regular championship content. Apart from that, I'll see you all in the next one.